Hey, welcome to Dan's Model Works, and we're back at the clutter zone. And this is part three of our building a modern wrecker truck. This is an Italeri kit, and it doesn't say it, but it's a Ford LTL 9000. And uh, I've basically got the frame together. Let's get the box lid out of the way. There we go. And put you guys on the stand. And where are we? Okay, the engine hasn't been glued in place. Uh, it's just sitting in there, and but it's mostly been painted up. Transmission's been painted. Flip things around, you can see the back end has been assembled. Shock absorbers are in there, and we have stretched the frame by two full inches because basically the the Italeri kit is a fairly stubby tow truck. So we want to go longer. Uh, basically, modern North American tow trucks are very, very long. So even this one, which is basically going to be a 20-year-old truck, really, being an LTL 9000. So anywho, uh, one of the first things we need to do to the frame is we need a longer drive shaft. Because, of course, the one we have is going to be two inches too short. So I can either... Buy a piece of styrene rod that's going to be the right length. Or hopefully I can find a nice piece of straight styrene from uh, a sprue and I can use that. So that's going to be our first step this week. All right, well, looking through the, the sprues from this kit, because it has some fairly large sprues, I got excited because I saw a big, long strip. And then I realized, yeah, well, that is the, the drive shaft. <laughs> it's obviously not going to be long enough. What I will be doing is I'm going to chop off the universal joints and then I'm going to be putting another piece of styrene inside. I did find a couple pieces that probably would be long enough but you know what they're not really as beefy as this. This is um, some evergreen styrene. It's actually a piece of tubing but most drive shafts are a tube anyway and you're not going to be looking inside the drive shaft anyway. So this is basically the same diameter. So I think I'm just going to take the easy way out and I'm going to use this piece of styrene and glue the U-joints on the ends and that'll give me my my drive shaft. So that's how I plan on doing it. And here's our new drive shaft and a quick test fit shows that it's pretty damn close. So I'll set that aside until I'm actually ready to glue the engine in for good. So here's our engine pre-wash. Now that the engine has had its wash of uh, black added to it. There was no reason not to glue it in place. It basically glues in here and here and then it uh, engages with the radiator at the front. Obviously there should be another set of engine mounts in there somewhere but Adelary doesn't really show them to you. At any rate everything lines up nicely. The drive shaft is in place and it turned out to be just the right length. All I did was just add two inches to the length that the part already was using the universal joints that were part of it. So these wheels are not glued on, they don't have their end caps on, but they're staying in place, which is good because I can put all the wheels on and it'll help me to see the overall stance of the model while I continue to assemble it. As work continues on putting the dual tandems on, I'd like to call your attention to something here in the instructions. If we look here, this is the outer wheel, the chrome part, and they show it going on top of a, one of the tires, but they don't show any sort of an outer uh, retaining ring right here. They just show it sliding right on. And if we look at the sprue map, you can see, focus, that is what the sprue for the gray wheel moldings looks like. This, however, 
is what the sprue actually looks like. It has these two extra segments with these rings. And those rings actually do fit on the back side of the chrome outer wheels. And even though the instructions don't tell you to use them, I'd highly recommend that you do because that way the tire can stay firmly on the wheel. Otherwise you'd end up with like a little bit of side to side stirring happening. So I'm almost wondering if this was a revision to the kit after they initially put it together and then somebody said, hey, wait a minute here, we don't have any rings for the back side of the chrome wheels. I don't know, but they don't mention these in the instructions, but you really do want to use them. Here is that ring glued on. Like I said, it's not vital, but I think you, you won't regret putting them on. Here we have one of the fuel tanks glued together and we can see one of the big disadvantages to trying to reproduce these chrome long range fuel tanks in that you inevitably end up with a seam. You know, you can either have a top or bottom or the sides and there's really no way to get around it. So your best bet is to try to achieve as good a join as possible and then sand it smooth, and then take bare metal foil and literally rewrap your, your fuel tanks, as well as putting a piece across the end to get a nice seamless finish. And that's what I'm gonna be doing with this one and the other one. Here we can see one of the fuel tanks where I've basically sanded where the seam is top and bottom. And I've also sanded the ends. Now there's still a little bit of a line here. Just in case, like I can still feel that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to run a little line of putty on there. Then I'm going to sand it one more time. The next step, what I'm going to do is where the straps are. I'm basically going to paint that black. Then I'm going to come back later and... The actual strap material, I'm going to paint that chrome silver. And that'll give the appearance of a chrome strap that has a piece of rubber underneath it. And then finally, I'm going to wrap the tank in bare metal foil. And hopefully that will give the impression of uh, a chromed tank, which is held by metal straps with a, a rubber bushing which is what you actually find on most of these trucks anyway. Yeah, I know it looks like a mess right now, but it was easier just to paint the entire strap black. And then the middle area, like I said before, is going to be painted chrome silver, and then the rest of the areas are going to be uh, bare metal foil. Should look good once it's all put together. Let's cross our fingers. There, I said it would get better. So this is the stock fuel tank. And you can see the seam running along the top of it. And this is it after it's been sanded and then basically replated with bare metal foil. And if we look at the end of the fuel tank, you can see once again, there is a little dot where my circle cutter makes a puncture, but it gets rid of the entire seam there. Now there are still going to be some seams basically on the on the back side where it goes up against the frame. So and this also has been polished. So there we go. All I have to do is do this one exactly the same. Now what I'm doing right here is the steps are awfully bright. So I'm putting a wash of German gray slash tire black in each of these little pockets. Now of course on the real truck, these are 
Um, these are actually uh, perforated. But if we were to try to do that without resorting to etched metal, these things would just fall apart. So this is kind of a, a poor man's way of giving some depth to these parts. Now once they dry and the finish inside the pockets becomes black, it'll look a little bit better. And I'll give you a, a before and after picture. So the wash in the steps has dried. You can see it's a lot less shiny than it was. And I've put the cap on the fuel filler. Unfortunately, the clutter zone went and ate the other one. So if I don't find it by the end of the project, I'm gonna to have to scratch build one. Probably not the most difficult thing I've ever scratch built, but annoying nonetheless. And there's our fuel tanks glued on. Just one more thing to do chassis wise is put the mud flaps in there. This is a mud flap that goes behind the front wheels and it's actually a fairly decent part. The only thing is, is it's probably about a scale inch and a half thick, which is a little thick. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to scrape down the edges and that will reduce the apparent thickness of the part. Okay, this may be a little tough to see, but the one on the top has been thinned down. The one on the bottom is the part that's been unmolested. And if we look at the one that's been thinned down, the entire mud flap hasn't been thinned down. It's just the edges. And you're only going to be able to perceive that from the edges, so you don't have to worry about thinning the entire part. Just the edges will do to give the effect of a much thinner part. I didn't worry quite as much about the inner edge, but the outer edge that you're gonna be able to see from the outside of the truck, that's what I was concentrating on. These are our two front mud flaps after painting. And I've got one more step I'm gonna to do to them before I put them on. I'm just going to dry brush a little bit of rust staining on the actual rubber just basically the areas that, that would have uh, been attacked by road salt and grime uh, pretty quickly, even on a well cared for truck, because we want this truck to look hard working, but well cared for. So even though these parts may have been fairly shiny and everything like that, this metal that comes and holds the flap in place, that would tend to rust pretty quickly. So. We want to just put a little bit of subtle weathering on these parts here. Here are the mud flaps after having some testers rust dry brushed on them. Just basically where the hardware is. The idea being is that's usually one of the first things that starts to rust. This is the exhaust pipe as it comes out of the turbocharger and goes down to the underside of the truck. I've already painted it gunmetal. And what I'm going to be doing now is I'm going to be painting this end of it uh, tester steel. And I'm going to be going from 100% tester steel to basically dry brushing to maybe about here. So that it goes gradually from gunmetal to steel. And then I'm going to come back and I'm going to dry brush some testers rust on it going heavy here and very little here. And hopefully that will simulate a pipe that has experienced an awful lot of heat up at this end and then it's starting to cool down at this end as it goes down towards the rest of the exhaust. And here's our exhaust pipe with a dry brushing of rust modeled on. And of course as we get farther away from the actual turbo we want to cut down on the rust and allow the metal to get more shiny. So this part is ready to go on the model now. Well that's our exhaust pipe glued in place and our front mud flaps are glued in place and of course weathered. If we flip it over, you can see the other one there. And I didn't get nearly as much done this episode as I thought I was going to. But I was feeling a little bit under the weather. 
But at any rate, hopefully next episode we'll be getting into the cab and we'll be doing something about that horrible uh, dashboard decal that Atelier gives you. So thanks for watching Dan's Model Works and until next time, keep on modeling.